Alfred, I am so speechless. I am um, excited. Um, you know, the words can't express what's about ready to happen right now because we have a legend with mm -hmm. us today. Mm -hmm. We have somebody that she don't know from the time that I was a young man uh, that had a crush on the Clark sisters and she she was my my girlfriend and she didn't even know it. You know what I'm saying? Because she came from the grand old church of God oh, in Christ yes. and they was our celebrities. They was our celebrities, yes. You know, we are so excited to have none other than the Karen Clark Sheard from Detroit, Michigan, and from the legendary Church of God in Christ's own and the world's own yes. Clark sisters. Yeah. Good morning, good morning. <laughs> good morning to you. <laughs> Good morning, good morning. Uh, uh, you just don't know how excited not only are our listeners from all over the world yes. in 21 countries. Yes. They're flying on here like we giving away free money right now because we told them that you was going to be on. Yes. And they were like, no, no, she ain't. I said, yes, she yes, is. Yes, she is. <laughs> now, 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 Sister First Lady uh, Shears, I got so much to talk to you about. Yes. Can, can, can I start off by saying to you that you are truly a woman of your word. When you actually grace the stage here in San Diego for our very first Bayside Gospel Board, the Midway. And at, in during that season, you were uh, it was the first message that uh, Bishop Shear was going to preach as uh, being on the general board. And you, was, you had to come out here and he gave you permission to come. And then you were suffering from vertigo, but you we 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 got on both sides of you, and you took the stage yes. and just rocked that ship, and and then I was just like, this one right here, she a real one. Oh yeah, she's an OG. <laughs> to be able to, to be able to sing with vertigo, because yeah. I had vertigo, and it is nothing nice. They say like a ship that's tossed and driven. Uh -huh. That's how you feel. Right. right. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so we, we just want to start off by saying thank you so much for giving us so much love in our city right. and around the world. And we want to say good morning to the Wake Up Morning Show. And we want to say, first of all, you look amazing and happy belated happy birthday. birthday. Yes. Thank you very much. Yeah. I'm just in trying to embrace these new 60s. <laughs> hey, God has they, blessed you. Yes. These streets, <laughs> as it, the young people say. Yes. Well, okay. And so... Now, you know, did anybody ever tell you that Kiara, you just spit her out, and uh, she looked, every time I see her, I see you all over again? Oh, yeah. I, I actually get that all the time. And, of course, I'm godly proud, godly proud to know that, you know, everybody's saying, you know, y'all look like twins, and then they get mixed up, and they say, now, are you Kiara, or is <laughs> <laughs> which one? And they, I say, I like that confusion. <laughs> right. Now, first lady, I got to say, she looks like Twinkie a lot, too. <laughs> oh, yeah. I get that. Actually, when Kiera was, when I first saw her, yeah. I saw Twinkie. When I first, when she came out. Yes. I want to tell you, I, <laughs> I immediately said, oh, my God, she look like Twinkie. Right. Oh, so, yeah. She has her looks. Too. Right. Okay. So, I want to go all the way back to when you... Uh, I'm going to tell you, you know, when I told you it was my, 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 my girlfriend and you didn't know it, you and your sisters came to San Diego and sung at an event at the El, El Cortez, Cortez Hotel. Hotel. <laughs> and, you, and you sung, uh, uh, y'all sung, uh, Is My Living in Vain. And when I tell you, wow. y'all killed that song, that and me and 70s. my cousins was in the back arguing, you know, but like saying, well, well, we part of the Blake family. They part of the Moss family. Yeah, well, you know that was mine. <laughs> <laughs> right. But I, I tell you, from the you have your, your your family and you all have been the kind of like the music of our life. Oh wow! And so I, I you know, I brag when uh, UNAC was in L.A. and yeah. and your mama let me carry carry her stuff from place to place uh, when we was doing choir rehearsal. You know what I'm saying? And everybody like said, well, you know, we go all the way back. I said, well, did you get to carry uh, uh, her stuff when she got to go to this place or that place? They said, no, you got to do that. I said, just one time. But it was, I, I, I cherish those, uh, those times with our legends. And every time that we have something massive in San Diego, 
The first thing I said, we got to get the Clark sisters here uh, some way, somehow. And so that's that's my story. Robert, I know you got stories. I got some good stories for First Lady. Do you remember your friend Joanne Howe in Otis Richmond from Pine Bluff, Arkansas? Oh, yes. Oh, Joanne Howe was like a big sister to me. Yes, yeah, she was. And you remember how at your first Emmanuel and your second Emmanuel, you would have the University of Arkansas Pine Bluff Koja Club Choir come. Do you remember those days? Yes. Oh, I'm, I'm one of those kids. I'm one of the oh, kids. Wow. Yes. And you and your husband were so kind to us. And, um, and your mom would let us come back to the convocation and sing the Saturday night, which was for the recording artists. Remember, Friday night would be local people and national. And Saturday, you had to be a recording artist to be at Cook's Convention Center. And your mom loved the Koja Club so much that she would invite us back the next day. Those are my memories. Wow. Well, thank you all for just, I'm, I'm just always overjoyed just um, when I hear uh, people, of, okay, you know, radio personality, you know, we have a lot in common. Mm -hmm. And to even see how you all still embrace my mother, Dr. Maddie Moss Clark, I really appreciate appreciate that you're remembering because those um, those memories we cannot forget we Never. cannot forget um, those memories of mom when she uh, just like you say the Koji club choir yes. and those moments and then when uh, he talked about when we sang in San Diego yes. it, it's just memories because you know we don't have moments like that right. we don't mm -hmm. have moments like that right now right. you know those endearing moments yes. that you 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 have respect for the leader or and then my mother was a mother to everybody mm -hmm. yes so just just knowing that those moments that people can remember to just realize that it's all about ministry and embracing one another you know despite of our agreements or disagreements you know right. so that's so important that and that's way it was in those days and you know one of the things that i want to say about your mom is that people did not know how accomplished she was because mm. you know especially in the ministry um it was male dominated and for her to literally uh, come up and take charge and literally earn the respect of people. And even when they tried to block her, the anointing was so heavy on her that they couldn't even block her. That is so true. That is so true. I remember when days when uh, my mother had such a tuggle of, of in, in, in ministry, it, it could be at different venues. And I'm telling you, because of, as you stated, the, the male dominance, mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't that women are supposed to step in, right. you know, in some of those territories. And it was such a tug and just watching her. But they respect that they had to mm -hmm. respect the anointing on her yes, life. And it was like the anointing just like opened doors for her. Like, OK, if y'all won't let me in this door, then God will open another door. So you're you're exactly right. That's the way her life was, you know, because she used to say many times when I tell you, she used to always say, before you hit that stage, you make sure you got it right with God. Yes. So the anointing yes. can mm -hmm. come and break yokes, break yokes of moments of, of where the enemy don't want you to come on that territory. Right. But mm -hmm. God knows how to change the mind and flip the script. Yes. So mm -hmm. that's I, those are memories that I'll never forget of what my mom instilled. So thank you for even mentioning that. And what people don't really know is that your mom had the first choir to sing at the Apollo Theater. Right, mm -hmm. right. Yes, she was a game changer. A game changer. And like he said, during that era, it was always men, men, men. But she, she stood flat foot and she proclaimed the gospel. And you can't, like you said, argue with the anointing because the anointing will have people do for you and they'll know why they're doing it. That's right. Absolutely. I mean, that's the way. And I'm glad she um, instilled that in us because sometimes you you get to a point where you be like, OK, no, I, I can't take it. Mm -hmm. And we give up so easy. But mm -hmm. I think by following my mother and by her being so um, exemplary and leading by example, mm -hmm. you know, at, in front of her girls, you mm -hmm. know, just watching how she 
uh, set her face like a flint and, and she just kept it moving no matter what. She didn't, uh, she was unstoppable. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm, I'm just, just so thankful that I have a, that, that I'm in that bloodline. Let me mm -hmm. just say that. How did you feel growing up in a choir, Southwest Michigan State Choir, that had Lisa Page Brooks, Vanessa Bell Armstrong, Rance Allen, the Winans children, um, the Bell children, um, the Mortons? How did it feel you being the younger one coming up under such powerful anointed ministries from within one choir? Well, you know what? It, 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 back then, it was like a family. Mm -hmm. Now, Lisa Page Brooks, she's a little younger than me. And she wasn't in the choir then, right. Southwest Michigan. Right. Because we were all little then. Right. You know, <laughs> we were all just, and just having the feeling of, it was such a family. It was, and that's what my mother portrayed. She was a mother to everybody, mm -hmm. every, even those that was in her age bracket. Mm -hmm. Right. The respect that she got. Yes. It was amazing just to have those moments. I mean, my mother was the house where you go to uh, the house down the street um, and and she got Kool-Aid with the flies uh, flying right. around and right. hanging around. Right. And, and any day she gonna have fried chicken just sitting on the table, right. you know, just to serve, just having a family moment. And um, it was some, some moments where, you know, when we had the choir uh, rehearsal, mother would, turn it into a service wow. and it was like oh my goodness after we get out of service it was just like those were great moments yes. and, and just to think that um some that was in the choir back then are are, are gone and um we're, we're able to still talk about it right talk about it and remember and to let this generation know yes. and, and what's blowing my mind is that this new generation is really tapping into my mother yes that a woman that they never knew mm -hmm. so i think with us talking about it, and i appreciate you all bringing up the members memories so that these young people the next generation mm -hmm. could know you know hey it's all about respecting even and embracing correction yes. you know that's that was the epitome of my mother yes <laughs> Yes. You know, she, she loved and reached out to those who even wasn't, you know, uh, in her bloodline, but right. she connected with them. Right. And, you know, as, as a musician, um, uh, everybody have these different stories. And I said, I said, my story is different. She loved me, <laughs> you know. And it, it's so funny because you know how when you have somebody of her stature, mm -hmm. everybody, they, every, almost every interview we have ever done, the moment we mention your mother, Everybody has a story about how she either sold into them, how she gave them opportunity. And we, we were like, wow, because for us, it was just a part of our heritage of being a part of the church. Yes. And so uh, I want to say to you that, um, and so this is a little selfish, so I'm going to ask some questions. Uh, <laughs> okay. First and foremost, I want to go to the TV show first. That was my TV watching. I, I, I don't do a ton of TV watching, but that show for me just blessed my heart to see a show that was real, the show that dealt with real issues. And um, I said, when, when, when it didn't come back, I've been in reruns now, and I've watched it every show maybe four or five times. That was one of the best shows out because it showed realness. Is there a possibility that we're going to be able to get it back? Well, <laughs> maybe, maybe later. Um, of course, it was uh, it was Bishop's Bishop's uh, idea, and his and he just wanted to make sure you know that because you know we were fought really bad mm -hmm. about you know doing that show mm -hmm. um, in Kojic, mm -hmm. you right. know and. It, it, it really hurt. It really hurt me because my husband said, we want to use it like as ministry you right. know? because there we found out we got emails, we got letters saying, wow, I'm a bishop, I'm a pastor, and we're going through the same thing. So in, it encourages us to see that a, a, a church family, you know, uh, a bishop is going through and through this and not, and not, 
hesitant to tell the real life story right and mm-hmm. right. how we can get through this yes. exactly. you know we're human it's real and so um it hurt then but um there's other ways that god opened doors mm-hmm. for us to even tell our testimony and my my husband has bishop Shear. he he's phenomenal man of God. He has a heart for the church. And he always said, I don't want to do anything that will misinterpret Mm -hmm. my salvation or me as a leader. Right. You know, Mm -hmm. he's always been integral Mm -hmm. into not being selfish, but thinking about, oh, what would my church family, you know, what, what I embrace, Mm -hmm. what, what would, you know, what would they think? But to a point he said, you know what, this is ministry. And he fought for Mm -hmm. his son. Everybody started talking about, oh, he got that son that's doing this and doing that and doing. He said, listen, we have to come together and embrace our sons, whether they're doing bad or good. Mm-hmm. We have to love them and then slap them on the hand mm-hmm. and say, no, we don't believe in this. So you got to get it right if you're going to be under this roof. You know, so it, it's just all about ministry for us. And that's what that show really portrays. So um, they even asked for more seasons Mm -hmm. and they my my husband by my husband's request he asked them can we do it at a later date and they 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 much obliged (laughs) they did and big old BET you know they respected my husband's wishes so So let me say this there's a couple of things um that I want to say what made the show for me so phenomenal was that we got to see the real without the nonsense there was no sensationalism. We got to really get to know uh, the family to a certain extent. But my favorite portion is when a scene took place and Bishop said, shut off these cameras. No, we ain't going to have that. I said, that right there is how we were raised up. That, right, that was so real. I was like, get it. And it was so powerful to me because Bishop doesn't even know, but there are so many young ministers I could send you pictures that they look, they, they dressing like your husband, putting the ball cap on like your husband, got the everything like your husband because it let them know that you could still be cool, anointed, but be real and, and be, you know, holiness of hell. That, when I tell you, that would do his heart. So glad if he was here right now. But I, I'm going to let him know that you passed that along. And, you know, I think that's what they the people love about my husband is that he embraces, he can tap into, um, he can appeal to the young, mm-hmm. he can appeal to the old, mm-hmm. you know, and all ages. And I think that's what they love about him is that he can, and he loves the dress. He loves those things, you mm-hmm. know. And he taps into what others do not tap into, mm-hmm. the, the realness. People want to see that that inside, mm-hmm. you know, uh, as to how you're going to handle right. uh, situations or problems that come about. So, yeah, he's he's always been, um, as a matter of fact, when you when you talked about uh, his clothing, um, he had so many offers about doing a clothing line. Mm-hmm. So that's co- about to come uh, into fruition. But he had a everybody, he's a trendsetter as well. Mm-hmm. You know, those caps, those yep. baseball caps. Mm-hmm. When he started wearing those baseball, I told him, I said, honey, you don't need to wear them caps with them suits. Mm-hmm. And when he started, he said, look, I'm going to wear my caps because I got to cover my head. Mm-hmm. This is this is my head and right. I'm going to catch a cold. He used to wear them baseball mm-hmm. caps with them suits. Next thing I know, the whole yep. Everybody right. started doing it. All of the pastors and mm-hmm. the bishops started doing it. So he's a trendsetter. And then another thing that people don't know that he started was the signature in yep. the, um, the, 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 in the cuffs. cuffs. I, mean, yep. I mean, he started that and it just went uh, haywire. So I t- now I said, look, we ain't giving the stores no more ideas. Come on. We're going to embrace them. Yes. <laughs> and, you know, just go into entrepreneurship and mm-hmm. having his own clothing line. Amen. So it's coming. Well, you know what? He's an educated man, too. Wasn't he from the absolutely. educational field? Yes, you're absolutely right. Yes, he's an educator. He taught school yes. for 15 years, yep. if I'm not mistaken. Uh-huh. I know he would correct me right now. For 15 years um, in the uh, Detroit, Detroit Board of Education. Right. Now, let's talk about entrepreneurship. What, what had you think about starting your own label? What, what made you 
decide, let's do my own thing. Uh, I've been singing, making millions for everybody else. Let me bring it home. What? How did that come about? Well, at the last, I think it was the last album um, my sisters and I did. And I think that was when, I can't uh, p pinpoint the years, but mm -hmm. it was during the time when uh, Twinkie had made the decision to uh, do her own solo. Bring it home. And, you know, mm -hmm. embark up upon that. Mm -hmm. And I think that's when, you know, I, I had made the decision, look, let me, let me start, you know, building my own, um, my own solo career mm -hmm. or my production. Mm -hmm. And so it, it, it dawned upon me. I discussed it with my husband because my husband is a businessman as well. I mean, he takes care of all of our business. Mm -hmm. And to make a long story short, I said, you know what? I want to have my own. I told my husband, I want my own record company mm -hmm. because we've gone. I've been in the business for over 50 years. Right. Uh, doing records for other record companies, as you stated. I mean, and they're making decisions um, for us when, you know, we've been experienced on the road. Mm -hmm. We've been experienced dealing with all sorts of records. I'm like, I have it right here at my fingertips. And uh, my husband said, you know what, let, let, if that's what you want to do, I'm going to support you in your dream. Always been a supporter. And he just stepped out by faith with me. He believed in me and, and he, he was my financial backing. We started it. And then as my son got older, mm -hmm. he started, you know, showing how um, his business mindset started coming into uh, fruition as, it, as he got older and, and he became a man, a businessman mm -hmm. like his dad. So he turned it over to my son. And then that's when, you know, we, we kind of, we was, we shot up then. Right. But I think that's what, that's what pushed me. That's what motivated me is that all of these years, I said, you know what, let us go on and, and, and take ownership right. of our own label right. and let's reach out to others, all this other talent mm -hmm. that, has a hard time getting into record companies. Yes. I mean, I can hear, it just it just kind of grieved me to, yes. to hear that a lot of this talent out here, they have so much, you know, the record business is very, very Brutal. unpredictable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, in this industry is unpredictable. Mm -hmm. And to see how some of these young people who have a heart for really ministry, mm -hmm. I, I said, let me do something to give back and reach out and that right there that I'm glad that God opened the door for me to be a vehicle to reach out. So eventually I'll be reaching out to other artists to um, assist them into uh, embarking on their career as well. Well, from that, you end up winning three Grammys. You wrote a, you wrote a, you wrote a song. So mm -hmm. all that came full steam ahead and allowed you the opportunity to write. And you wrote a song that won three Grammys. That's very unusual in gospel Grammys for somebody to win three, maybe two, but not three. Let's talk about the Grammy and Blessing Highly Favored. That was an exciting moment. I, I just one day um, sat down at the piano and of course, uh, Donald Lawrence said, I want you all, he was our producer for that particular record. And he said, I want you all to um, pursue your writing skills even more. Twinkie has always been the writer for the Clark mm -hmm. sisters, always did. And at that time, um, Twinkie kept telling us, I'm burnt out, now it's you all time, you need to go ahead. And we tried so hard to, to, to motivate her and encourage her, you know, and I told Twinkie, I said, Twinkie, I said, you, you, in that field is my mentor right the way you write and to see how your songs are relevant now mm -hmm. it's just uh, it's incredible to me and so she began to minister to me and said karen but you got it now i i believe that the torch is being passed down to you wow. you know so you need to get to writing so she encouraged me along with my sisters and I said, no, because I felt so, I was so hesitant about writing because I said, I don't want to be the writer that write nursery rhymes right. and nobody will <laughs> embrace it. <laughs> so um, Twinkie said, there is no such thing. There is no such thing right. because there are songs out there that if God give you a gift to write, yes. there are people out there yes. that will embrace that you, there, 
that will embrace your anointing and your gift. Yes. So that's what motivated me to get down on the piano, that piano right mm -hmm. there. Yes. I, I'll never forget it. I sat down at that piano and I said, Lord, help me. I don't want to. I kept saying in my mind, I don't want to <laughs> write a nursery rhyme, right. you know, <laughs> and I started singing and the Lord gave me these words. I'm blessed and highly favored. Mm -hmm. Everybody kept saying blessed. And at that moment, everybody kept just, it was just in the air. I said, let me just go on and write a song about it. And the Lord gave me that melody. And I said, I got to make it so where the Clark sisters, it could be Clark sister. You right, know? right, right. And so I build it up as I begin to build. The Lord began to reveal to me how it would be. Uh, I, I begin to think about is my living in vain and just kind of match right. it up to that. And right. that's when I told Twinkie, I said, well, you was my inspiration when I wrote that song. And to see how. Wow, I would have never known that three Grammys. Three. That's still blowing my mind even today. That yes. is blowing my mind. Yes. Okay, so I'm going to take us back. I'm going to bring us back to San Diego, uh, to the San Diego County Fair. Uh, and um, to have uh, you four sisters there was amazing. But I want to talk about your son, who was the MD, and he was on the drums. That was the very first time that I, I got to meet your son in person. And when I tell you not only was he so professional, but he was one of the most nicest persons I have met in the industry in a very long time. And he said, he said, brother, look, here's my number. It's my cell number. Hit me up. Whatever you need, just holler at me. And um, when people see mm -hmm. what, when our young people go through mm -hmm. and, they, and they're, they're finding their way in life, mm -hmm. they don't get to see how he still served. And, and how he still was there. And he when he was in San Diego, you saw no begrudgingness. Nope. You saw no, no, I don't want to be here. He was just having fun. And if you, would, if you would go, I should show you the footage of you all on stage. Because I remember Twinkie coming on stage and she was cold. And I told him, go get my coat. We wrapped her up in this big old coat. And because she was cold. But she was sitting there and I said, now, when y'all get up there, it's going to look totally different. There are going to be folks everywhere. She said, for real? I said, trust me, they've been waiting for this moment for a long time. Earl Dean was like, man, we got to get the Clarkses. I said, Earl. I was I'm the trying. one, Karen. You was, uh, you got to my uh, request. Yeah. And I was like saying, I'm trying. I'm trying to work it out. <laughs> and, you know, and, and the first thing that I did yep. is I called you. And you said, okay, just call the office and see if we available. Right. And, and you literally orchestrated but it let me get to see the family uh and you you all got to spend some time with other people here in san diego but it was amazing to me to watch your son grow into his manhood and his leadership and i want people to know that that it's not over with our young people we got to stick with them yes right right thank you for that i just um let, let me just say that my son he just he's still blowing our minds um mm -hmm. even just watch him how he is um he's in the ministry now i wouldn't have never known mm -hmm. that my son would be the minister of music yes you know from thinking about i'm just going back for from days of when i i got scared my mm -hmm. husband was afraid like we got to put prayer and fasting on this right, boy right because he just scared us so right but to see him now is amazing. And I thank you for even um, embracing that and talking about that. Because, you know, we sometimes look down on them like and don't give them a chance. And I think that's all they want. Yes. Let, let me just, you know, I'm, I'm in this moment right now of and I keep telling I keep I try to imp encourage parents and and mothers and fathers. I try to encourage single mothers and single fathers just love on them. Mm -hmm. Just keep loving on them no matter what. You can still slap them on the hand, let them know, you know that that's that's what parents are supposed to do. Mm -hmm. You know, spare the rod and spoil the child. child. Yes. So we I'm not saying do not do that, but still along with that you got to mix it. You know, it's mm -hmm. got to be b bittersweet. Right. You got to give him that love as well. And to see how my son is just, he's a businessman and he loves the Lord. He's praying now. I went into his house. I said, look, I said, 
it's you going to change and you ain't going to know why. Right. Because I didn't went in there. I took the oil and everything. <laughs> I just went through the house. Just start pouring oil on his bed. Yes, come on. Kitchen. I said the blood of Jesus over his right. <laughs> in his closet. Right. That's the kind of stuff my mother used to do yes, my too. with us. Because, yeah. you know, we weren't always goody in right. our teens either. Right, you know? come on. But to see him now, it's just, oh, it's just. I'm so grateful to God. How I that's why I can tell parents all over the world, God knows how to change their mind and take the t bad taste out of their mouth yes. and put the taste of loving God in their mouth. So it's just wonderful. And then on the second note when you had mentioned about being us being in San Diego, thank you so much for being the businessman that you were. I mean, when I tell you they took care of business We've had times where we got off the plane, we had to sit in the airport and wait hours and hours Jesus. and hours. But y'all was right there picking us up, treated us like, you know, like first class women. And, and I mean, everything was, thank you. And everybody in San Diego, much love to all of our San Diego family. We appreciate you all loving on us and giving us that royal treatment. Thank you for that. Yes, I was just finna talk about Cheryl Deering that you that started bringing you here, and you, she loved you guys. She loved you personally too. Oh, yes, she did. Yes. Oh, I just miss her so. Yes, much. yes. I mean, she would call me. I mean, just out of the blue, say, Karen, Karen, this 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 ain't one of your fans. This is your sister. Right, <laughs> right. That's and her. And I love to hear that. Yes. And I loved Cheryl. I remember when she called me and she told me what she was battling with. And my heart went out to her. I'm like, this girl's the sweetest one. Yes. And I began to pray and I said, God have mercy. Yes. And I'm like, why couldn't this happen to somebody who's just lying right. on somebody? Right, you right. <laughs> Those thoughts come to your mind. Well, of course they do. I'm like, this is so, this is my sweetheart. Yes. I miss Cheryl. Me she too. loved me. You're right. Yes. She loved me. She brought me to San Diego when mm. nobody else did. Yes, yeah. she did. And she will bring uh, you every you, year. Oh, you never forget those. Yes, people. yes, yes. So I want to ask this question. Um, Kiera came on the scene for us in a very big way with you and her singing. And you say, now you follow me. Mm -hmm. Now, I've seen a, 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 a more recent version where y'all did it on stage again as she being an adult now. Now, let me just ask the question. When did you know your baby girl had the oil and did do you did you see her where she's at now back then when she was around she was singing in the choir around nine years old mm -hmm. and um, lisa page brooks was over the kids choir it was called kw bj's kids uh with voices uh, for jesus and we had this little choir at our church and that was when we were my husband he was pastoring like for maybe about nine years then and um kiera she'd act like she didn't want to sing and that was bothering me she was in the choir with you know uh lisa page brooks you know being the director and she came to me and she said i said I, i'm really worried about kiera i don't think she's gonna want to sing like I want her to, I don't, right. I, it's scaring me. Cause Lisa would pull her out to sing and she would be, she would say no, she would be very hesitant. So I, I had some fearful moments about that. Cause I wanted, you know, to, you know, raise her up like my mom did. And right. sometimes it doesn't go that way. Cause right. I've seen that happen. Sometimes it don't go the way you want. Mm -hmm. You want your child, you have aspirations for right. your children, but it may not be what they want. Right. And so I didn't be, I didn't want to be the parent that push her and then she regrets it later on. Right. So I backed off and, and thank God for sister Lisa. Um, she said, I'm going to work with her. She said, I'm going to work with her. Cause sometimes it, it'll take an outside person, person mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. come and, you know, maybe uh, uh, steer them in another direction. Mm -hmm. So she had them kids singing. And then one day the kids, we had a kids program, youth program and Kiera, came out there and sung and told a church up. I said, mm. I don't know where that came from because <laughs> she wouldn't do that for me. Right. <laughs> she told a church up. She was like about, I think, eight years old then. She mm -hmm. was about eight years old. And she sang and anointing and the power of God was, and she began to cry. Oh, yes. 
And she didn't know what was happening. I, I could tell she couldn't express herself. She mm -hmm. didn't know, you know, because she was a kid then. Right. And I said, God is showing me. Here it is. This is where it's going to begin yes. right here. And then after that, after that, years later, she started embracing. And then she told me and she said, Mom, I don't want to sing. I want to. I want to do hair. I want to do nails. I want to, you know, girly things. I'm like, but you can do more than that. And then her dad stepped in the picture and said, look, that's going to be a side job. You're going to go get your college when you get older. Yeah. You know, so um, you're going to go to college and get your degree mm -hmm. when you get older. And said, so then that after that, to make a long story short, she embraced it finally at 10 years old. And that's when Donald Lawrence, when I did my finally Karen CD. Yes. And he said, let's try to get Kiera on the song that you sang with your mother, right. The Safest Place. And when I tell you, what we rehearsed, what you all heard, was not what we rehearsed. Uh -huh. That was not, that girl got out there. Wow. I said, oh no, the oil is on her. Mm -hmm. I, I noticed it then. And she was 10 years old when she did Finally Caring with me. Mm -hmm. And that's when I saw it. And I said, God has it from here. Yes. And ever since then, she's been on her own. And then she told me at one time, I think she was like 20, 23, 3, 25. And she said, I was traveling with her. And she said, Mama, and it got kind of her traveling schedule got out of hand. I mean, she was traveling at such a young age. And I was like, I got to go with her. She said, Ma, I got it now. I got it. You taught me well. Trust me. You put it in me, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to embrace it, right. and I got it. And when she said that, she had it, and she got it and gone. So I'm so I, proud of her. I want to say this, which is really crazy. Kiera uh, is your daughter's name, and I have my daughter's name is Kiera, too. And we used to call her Kiki, too, so it's, it's really oh, funny. Wow. Um, uh, it was real easy when she came on the scene. I'm like, oh, Lord, look at it. It's still in the, it's still in the church, you know. <laughs> but it, it was just really blessing uh, us to see that. Now, here's, here's not going to be my second to the last question, but uh, Bishop is now on the general board. Uh-oh. And, and um, you know, my cousin is retiring. <laughs> um, are, are we ready to start the campaign? Oh. <laughs> I'm just asking. Why you gonna put me on the right, spot? Right, right. You should have told me. my assistant. Right. Okay, I'm gonna ask her this question. Right. Yeah. You know, tell Bishop I'm here for him. What's up? <laughs> wow. Well, you know what? Let me just first give my respect and honor to our leader. Yes. Bishop Blake. My husband has admired him for years, mm -hmm. and he can tell you. You you have to really you have to do a um, interview on him yes. to hear the story of how he and he says it best of how he went to California and he was so inspired to come home and build his ministry. Yes, and those are the type of leaders that we we need. Right, and thanks to Bishop Blake, much respect and honor. I mean, for him, may, I thank God that he kept him in good health yes. to lead this church yes. in a great way that he has did and 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 leave a great legacy, yes. you know, and to be in good health. Mm -hmm. I'm just so glad that, you know, we, we don't have a leader that we have to mourn. Come and, on. You know, but to just... I, we can respect him yes. for, for taking this, making this decision, mm -hmm. you know, and being in good health and to embrace his family while he's, you know, living. Right. So much respect to him. But now um, leading to my husband, you know, my husband, he's running for the general board. He mm -hmm. is running for the general board and he's, we're pushing him. I'm pushing she my husband general board. and he is, um, I'm going to let him tell you that. Right, I'm right. Okay. <laughs> he, so, tried, so, he tried so, to set you up. So, so no, 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 I'm not. See, Bishop, Bishop was so nice because we have we have a show out of Texas with the Angela Bennett show on God Radio One, and he did an interview with her. Angela Bennett, yes. And so, oh. um, and I said to myself, I've been waiting for you, uh, you know, uh, forever because you've been so busy. And they said, okay, well, we're gonna get her on. We're gonna get her on because out of all the Clark sisters, I think that you know, I feel that we're the closest. But you, you have such a 
a tie. You know, you never ever, and I want to say this to people, you never ever made me call someone else to talk to you. When I when I need to get to you, all I have to do is text you, mm -hmm. and if you say, and you'll either call me back or you'll say, okay, I, this is what to do, boom, 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 mm -hmm. and we always made it happen. And it was like a lot of people don't, they see you and they don't see how real you are because they see the celebrity status, but you are, I remember was like saying to you, well, what do you want to eat and where do you want to go? And you're like, oh, I'm just good. And we're like, no, you know, you know, you are um, our, our sweetheart, our heart, and people just don't know how much you all give as a family and then as individuals. And so we always, um, I want people to know that what they see is the real deal, the the sweetness, the kindness. When you and the sisters get together and do interviews and have to sing something, and y'all be like, no, sing it this way. It literally, I feel like, Yes, I'm sitting in the living room with them, and they doing their thing. Wow. Well, thank you for that. I thank you. You know, that was one thing that I always thank God for my mom. You mm -hmm. know, she was strict back in her day, yes. but I thank her for being strict because it prepared me for days like today yes. to have the fear of God. She instilled that in yes. us. She used to almost say, look, you keep acting like that. You got to have that attitude. Lord going to take every gift away from you. Yes. You ain't going to have nothing. Right. You know, <laughs> so those are moments that I remember that yeah. stick in my head. Like, okay, you got to have that. You if you can't, you got to make sure that you show Integro because you're, you're in front of all of these mm -hmm. people and lives are at stake because yes. people are watching you. Yes. So I don't want to do anything. I always want to make sure that I walk in humility. Yes. I, I am humbled where God has taken us. Mm -hmm. and, and I want people to know that, you know, that, that that what I do, I want to mostly give glory to God. And I will always dedicate this gift every day to God because I know he can give and take away. So yes. I'll never say that I own this gift or I can get right. out there and do this or I can get out there. No, yes. there's been more. I still get nervous to this day. Yes. So I think humility is the key. Humility is the key. So that's why I believe that God has has us here right now. I, I have a twofold um, question, then, it's, then I'm done. Um, who were some singers that you looked up to growing up? And if you were not singing, what would you be doing? Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that hard question. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, the easy part of the question is I really, really, really uh, admired Miss Aretha Franklin. I knew it. I knew it. Oh, that woman. I loved her. I watched her since I was like 16 years old. Yes. I used to hide. CDs, uh, not it wasn't CDs. Then. LPs. I used to hide the tapes, yes. the, the eight tracks, so my mama couldn't see. Right. I used to love her voice. Yes. It's just something about her voice that I used to love, and you know she was very inspirational to me. And then when she called me that first time, I it blew my mind. I just cried. I wow. cried. Cause I thought it was a prank call. Right. And she said, this is Miss Aretha. Cause I knew her musician. I knew right. her musician. And I said, can you just please tell her that I, how much I love her? Just let her know how much I love her. So he told her and he said, you mean, you're talking about that big ad Clark sister girl, Maddie's daughter. And, and he said, yeah, yeah. Her. He said, that girl can sing. Wow. He said, I gotta get her, give me her number. Wow. And she called me. And it just blew my mind. So wow. yeah, Aretha Franklin yes, I knew is it. my most admired. And then of course, um, Twinkie. Yes. I, I I was always inspired by her. Yes. And um, what was your other question? That hard one. <laughs> if if you weren't singing, what would you oh, be yeah. doing? If I wasn't singing, I would probably be uh, an EKG technician. Now, uh, any, let me get it right. An EKG technician. Uh -huh. Because I've always, I was, um, I always admired my sister, Jackie, because she was in the medical field. Right. And she 
was always, you know, the educator out of the group, the right. Clark sisters, because she, you know, she got her degree and everything. And, right. and I'm sitting there watching her, and I said, oh, I love this. I love it. I enjoy it. She said, well, come on. Come on and jump on the bandwagon with me in my field. Right. And she said, go on and, and let's go to school. I went to college, everything. Mm -hmm. I did. I went to college, got my EKG technician. And um, uh, no, I didn't get a degree. I, I, I was almost at the end of getting my degree. But that's when our career mm -hmm. had skyrocketed. Mm -hmm. And then I think that's what I would be doing. If I was. And Twinkie went to Howard University for a little bit, right? Yes, she did. Mm -hmm. Yep. So yeah, Twinkie. Yeah, she got her degree. Uh, I think she got an associate's degree in, in music. Wow. So let me ask you this question because we're going to wrap this up. Yes. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for the time. Thank you. Uh, just me following up, we actually um, uh, had some questions come in. One question was uh, Thanksgiving is coming up. What is your specialty dish? My specialty dish is greens. Everybody coming to my house. I want some greens. I want some greens. I want some greens. So, so that's regular. my specialty <laughs> dish. That's okay. Specialty. And last but not least, uh, uh, Kira's getting married, right? Yes. J, J. Drew's, I, I want to know what's happening with the grandson because uh, uh, he was... <sighs> He was so special on the show. And and then um, I, w I would like for you to tell Bishop that we love him and respect him yes. and thank him for sharing you with us. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, uh, you said Kiara. Yes. Try to remember all of that. What was the question about Kiara? So she, okay, so Kiara's getting ready to get married. Uh, what, what's the yes. big plans for, for the shindig? You know, uh, oh, so excited. I am so excited for my baby. Kiera is such a sweetheart. She is a daughter that a mother would dream of having. She never gave me any problems other than one of her teen years. You know, she had a little mouth <laughs> and I had to pop a mouth every now and then. But <laughs> I mean, her so sweet spirited and just love to reach out as well. She, of course, she got her program, and the, the sisters are loving her. And I'm just so proud of her. I'm wishing the best for her. Right. Because she's so deserving of it. Sweet. And my husband, he's just laying. He's like, whatever you want, you tell me what you need. He didn't know she was going to come back with an almost $75,000, $80,000 wedding. Jesus. I said, I don't think you should have asked her like that. Right, right. <laughs> But yeah, so he's going to give the world to her. She's so deserving of it. I'm so we putting things together. We looking at dresses. Wow. We, you know, we going down the scale of the, um, you know, invitations. So we're excited. You know, that's a little girl thing that mm -hmm. we enjoy right. doing. So I'm excited about it. Okay. And, Your grandson. Tell, tell yes. us what's happening with the grandson. Oh, I'm so proud of my, he's actually, He's 10 now, mm -hmm. and actually, that's the same age Kiera started singing. Right. He started early. He started, like, when he was six. When I had him at the piano, at the piano. he started singing. And um, it's plans. It's plans for him early. He's going to have an early start. I, mm -hmm. That's been in my, in my the, the same vision that I had for Kiera, mm -hmm. I have for him. Mm -hmm. And I, even with... Kiera, when she signed with, I think it was BMI, I think, and uh, Ken Pennell, they loved her. And I was like, she's too young. And I said, no, she's not too young. And he embraced it. And, I, and I'm thinking the same thing for my grandson right yes. now. So I believe that God's going to take him in, into places that, you know, we that Kiera hasn't been. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, I'm working with him. Um I'm starting off. I'm I'm teaching him a lot of hymns. You know that's, that's so important. Good. That I want. That's so important. That's good. So he is. I'm really excited about him too. Well, I, I want you to know and tell Bishop as soon as this cocoa is done and this COVID is over, we yeah. fly into Detroit so that we can hang out. Tell Jay Drew I'm looking to get into the studio with him, uh, and uh, I'm just excited about what is happening with the family. Uh, to all your sisters, let them know that we love them. And we sh truly appreciate you uh, yes. being the, the woman of God that you are. 
where can people find you in also what's up next um you can find me on my social media instagram karen clark sheared with the blue check uh-huh and of course facebook karen clark sheared same thing or official kcs mm-hmm. uh, um and then um everywhere you can find me everywhere and what's next for me probably let's see mm, i might do one more solo we'll see mm-hmm. one more I might do one. Everybody keep talking about it. And then we might do something with me and Kiera. Oh, that'd be oh. great. It's e- either or, because everybody was talking about that BET performance with yes. us together. And then mm-hmm. they kept saying, we want y'all to come back together and do something. So, so that's in the making. And then I have a book that I'm about to embark, embark upon. Wow. Um, that I'm writing. Because a lot that was in that movie, people don't know. that There's some more to that that I can tell, I'm going to tell in my book. So, but I want to say um, thank you. Thank you for your support down through the years to the family. Um, Thank you, even the support for my husband. And I'm going to tell him that you have a a campaign um, manager in San Diego, (laughs) Dr. Leonard. I'm going to have to... um, get you associated with my husband connected with my husband because we got to make that happen so thank you for all when i tell you it's an honor to be with you and to talk with you thank you so much i love both of you thank you and god bless you i have an idea for you daryl coley daryl coley wanted to do a duets album um i talked to him about it before you should do you should do a karen clark's duet album and get your favorite gospel and secular singers together that you choose and you should do an album and if and like aretha with the dig, digital technology you could put your voice with hers and do like natalie cole did with nat king cole and that would be amazing oh that's a wonderful idea you should I really you should really think you about the credit. it lord you gotta sit dr <laughs> lenny you gotta send me his name yeah. i gotta give him the credit <laughs> he gotta be in my credits wait, wait, wait. I, I would... <laughs> that's a great idea yeah. I, Ooh, I'm going to tease you because, you know, I, I was going to ask you, was it, this was a rumor. I said, was this a rumor that you and your husband going to do a duet uh, a, uh, uh, album <laughs> album of love songs called uh, uh, Kojic After Dark? <laughs> Y'all coming up with some ideas. Right. <laughs> but my husband will not sing. I'm trying to get him to She sing. had him in the studio. She had him in the he studio. He not sing. Hopefully, right. maybe when the Lord take him where he's where right, he right, going, right. he'll, he'll sing. <laughs> and, and, and James Mitchell, the writer, I Love You Forever, Forever You're My King, he yeah. wrote a song that you did in San Francisco at UNAC. He's on here right now. Really? James yeah. Mitchell from the Bay Area. Yes, I remember James. And you sing his song quite often, part of your medley. Oh, my God. I love him. Oh, such he, he's a on great here. writer. He's on here right now. Is he? Yeah. Yes. Hey, James, I love you. Yes. Much respect to you, man. Yes. Oh, my goodness. One of our, one of the greatest writers of these times. I today. agree. I agree. I love him. Okay, I know we got to let we you gotta, go. We got to let her go. T- t- tell your team we love them. Yes. And I- I'm going to play... Uh, the song that just messed me up, blessed and highly favored, uh, oh. as we go out, none other than the world-renowned songstress, a part of the world-renowned Clark Sisters, Miss Dr. Karen, Karen Clark, Clark Sheard. Love you. We love Thank you. We you appreciate guys. you so much. <laughs>